welcome everybody. This is, I'm coming to you from my home in Missouri. This is a, an unusual time, but it's also an unusual opportunity. If you don't get to come to Louisville every year and be with us in person, this is an opportunity to extend our reach. And we are very thankful to have hundreds of people, hundreds of homeschoolers and um, hundreds more from schools, classroom teachers, administrators joining us for this conference. This particular session is all about Simply Classical levels one, two, and three. Our next speaker, Christine, has taught from all of these levels. She is extremely helpful in breaking things down into how to teach. This is your how-to session for levels one, two, and three. Christine Howison has three children, ages seven to 11. Her family has been homeschooling for six years, five of which have been with Memoria Press. She says that after some difficulty teaching her oldest to read, she found Simply Classical. And after at least five years using the Memoria Press um, curriculum, she has now completed all levels of Simply Classical, with the exception of the newly released levels seven and eight. A fun fact is that in her earlier pre-kid life, Christine worked on an aircraft carrier, scheduling trips and events, sporting activities and port visit tours while in port and deployed with the USS Theodore Roosevelt. So please welcome our Simply Classical mom, Christine. Hello everyone. Uh, if you're new to joining us, I just wanted to welcome you and thank you for coming. Um, when I had agreed to teach, to, to do these talks, I assumed I'd be in uh, Louisville with all of the materials available, although on the plus side for these particular three levels, I didn't have to pack some of my extra supplies in the car. So that has definitely worked out to my advantage. Uh, we're going to be talking about levels one and level two and level three. And these are really our uh, learning to read, uh, uh, learning, learning to read levels. Um, well, obviously, there's math and writing and things like that, but these three particular levels um, build upon one another and culminate at being able to move from the learn to read stage to the, to the, uh, read to learn stage in the next uh, session that we'll have tomorrow morning at 10. So I'm going to begin with level one. Now I'm going to have to move a little bit. I just did a talk for levels A, B, and C, and I was able to have this stuff around me, but I couldn't fit six levels on my table. So I'm going to have to get up a little bit more for this one. Um, but level one does start to get, you get a lot of materials in your box. And we start with, um, oh, I'm really upset. I forgot to grab this phonics A to Z book. And I'm going to really, I really want to highlight it though, because it was definitely a book that I did not purchase originally. And about a year and a half after I started um, with Simply Classical, I ended up buying it and regretting not having purchased this. So it comes in the core, but if you're debating whether to get it or not, please get this book. It will really help you understand what is being presented. If you have never taught somebody how to read, it explains the philosophy um, and what they're doing and you'll understand why the curriculum guide is guiding you in a certain way. So please don't skip that book. And this curriculum guide, if you're worried about, when am I ever gonna have time to read that? It actually tells you. Uh, so if you look at our week one, um, it actually tells you when to read it. Uh, read phonics A to Z pages one to 15. So it's even scheduled for you to read it. And your first couple of weeks, that's kind of your assignment as the teacher is to go through those so that as you go through um, this level more, you're really going to understand what is happening. Um, then we're going to have um, these primary phonics reader sets. They're these little red books 
And I think I have a picture of my daughter reading them. I, I no longer have it. We've, we've moved on past those um, particular levels, but there are little individual books and it's like Sam sat on a cat and, you know, d different um, things like that. And those are also scheduled in here. So you'll definitely want to get those books for, for this particular level. It's, it's the red and blue. Uh, they're included in the set and it's it sets one and two. Um, Core Skills Phonics K, that is a, just a, a phonics that's going to be part of your writing workbook. First start reading books A to D, you need all of those. Um, the the American language series, Fun in the Sun, Soft and White, Scamp and Tramp, these are going to show up starting in book B and C. And in book D, this, the, those are going to really get picked up. They also really suggest alternating between Fun in the Sun and Soft and White as you transition from short vowels to uh, long vowels. Uh, we have the Story Bible, which is this beautiful book. And you're going to want to hang on to this one because you're going to see it again in level three. And then there's also this beautiful book, uh, The Creation Story for Children. This is actually scheduled in the uh, enrichment section, but it, uh, it is scheduled over several weeks and it's a really nice book to have. Uh, then we have a child's book of poems that's also scheduled in our enrichment. And it has some beautiful illustrations. Some are colored, some are not. Uh, the first Thanksgiving Day accounting story that's scheduled during the Thanksgiving works in, a, in the math section. Uh, Hailstones and Halibut Bones, that's a little poetry book that is actually scheduled in the junior kindergarten, but they do include it in uh, Assembly Classical Level 1. Then in this level, we introduce our art cards. And I took the art cards. This is uh, the first grade, the second, the kindergarten, the first grade, and the second grade. This is a, a photo album. I bought it off Amazon. It holds 100 prints. Each one has uh, 33 or 34. So I was able to put them all in here. And then I just put them in their sleeves. You can't see what's on the back. Um, but you can at least, it's there easy to pull out, but it was nice to have them in this order. I put them in order of the curriculum guide and it made it easy every week. I also would typically display them. I have this little um, cabinet over here and I had a little, a little holder that I could hold the card for. And then on this wall over here, I have the large prints and I store those. Those are, the, the cards are included in the level. The, the big prints are not. But I bought this, it's a heavy, hard case. And they are stored in here and they're nice and big. And so you can really see the details a lot better in these. And each one comes with a thumbprint so that again, you can put them in order of the curriculum guide and then they're just easier to find and easier to put away. There's these little sleeves that protect um, the prints, they were a really good investment. I'm glad that we've used them. I have, I bought three frames on sale at Michael's and I have one in our schoolroom, and that's typically the picture that we're studying for the week. And then I have two in another room and I typically put those, um, more seasonally. I'll, I'll just put those in there. Uh, I will tell you that my first year using Memoria Press, I kind of feel like I didn't do a fabulous job getting to the art cards, but my daughter is now going into fifth grade. And my younger two um, were taking a class that used the art cards and they wanted to quiz her on it. And I said, oh, well, she's probably not gonna really know those. And she just looked at me and she said, yes, I did. I've had this little binder sitting around our house for five years. And even though I didn't necessarily take the time to go through each one on a weekly basis through a recitation because they've been in our home and we've been displaying them in our home, she can practically identify most of the paintings in here. Uh, for fun, she and my son one day took, took out all of the, uh, all of the little art cards and looked at the back and they had a competition to see which one was the oldest um, card. So they read all the titles, they read who all the, um, the artists were and they did this in their spare time for fun. 
so the artwork has been around and I'm really glad that that's something that we have. It is scheduled daily and I would in the in the front of your curriculum guide it tells you how to use it questions that you can ask and things like that, but sometimes we all know we get busy and it's harder to fit that kind of stuff in but don't worry if you have it around your house, you make it accessible, they will rise to the challenge and they will uh, probably enjoy those things. Um, so let's just go through our book list real fast, finish going through that. Um, the Days Gone By CD. This is a bunch of poetry set to music. It makes it a lot easier to memorize the poems. We enjoy having those. I typically put it on, um, I download it, put it on iTunes and it's something that they can listen to independently. Then our math uses uh, Rod and Staff 1. In Simply Classical Level 1, there are two workbooks and just the first workbook is scheduled in this level. You really need the teacher's manual and you really need to use the teacher's manual in this one. If you don't, it's going to get, if you're just using the workbooks, they're not going to get the lessons that they really need out of it. There's a lot of interactive activities in here that you wouldn't know to do unless you followed the teacher's manual. One of the things that they want you to make is um, a flannel board. I never made the flannel board. But I do have these little cubes, which essentially uh, they wanted you to use a flannel board, have a line, and then make little flannel blocks. Well, I just did the same thing with the cubes, you know. So if you want to add four and three, there you have seven. If you want to subtract three from four, you can do that with these. You can do the same. So when you see how when they ask you to do that task in here, there are other things that you could use if you don't want to make a felt board. But I did make their little hundreds chart at the back of at the back of this book. There are samples. I should have marked the page. But anyway, um, here we go. So I just photocopied them, colored them, and stuck them on some cardstock for, and that's to mark your tens or your ones, your tens, and your hundreds. And I did actually have enough crayon boxes that I actually used crayon boxes to illustrate the ones, the tens, and the hundreds. I also have um, this I bought from Target, this little 100, this little 100 chart, and I have these little gems. And so you can, you know, you can put them on every fifth bead to count by fives. You can just do all kinds of activities with these little beads. Um, they also have you in Rodden staff use a number line. And so I printed out these and cut them and laminated them. They're markers to on a number line to be able to count by five. Um, the circles are for 25s and you can put them on all the, you know, from zero, you know, 25, 50, 75, and 100. Again, I just cut them out, lam printed them or photocopied them and laminated them. And then we have our, um, Unfortunately, they don't sell this puzzle anymore, but there is a geography puzzle in there and we've really enjoyed having this puzzle. It's, it's actually scheduled in your enrichment. So it's something that you really don't want to miss. It's something that it's, they can do kind of on the side after you've worked through it with them one time. We have um, the Simply Classical Copybook One. You're gonna start learning some Bible verses. They do take a few weeks and review the letters and in Memorial Press Kindergarten, they don't take this much time to review some of the letters. So um, that's what's nice about this copy book. And the, they start with you just tracing, drawing a picture, and then it moves to you copying right underneath. And those are scheduled weekly in there. These are the phonics books. In Simply Classical 1, you'll use the kindergarten throughout the school year, and then you'll use uh, Core Skills 1 in the summertime. So if you're wondering why you have it, it, it will get used in the summertime. And then this is the, the math book, that book 1. 
Now, what's really important in this level, oh, and then all the read alouds are, are listed here. And every week they give you, it's called Wonder, Beauty, and Imagination, and they'll tell you exactly when to use it. At the back of the book, it tells you there's a little grid. So if you're trying to figure out what week you need a particular book for, um, this tells you the read aloud book. It tells you what your science topic is. It tells you what the art piece you're gonna be studying. And then there's music as well. You don't need the little music book that um, Mariah Press sells. It's not used in, in this level. So in this particular level, the key thing is phonics and learning how to read and blend. And this is where I had probably the hardest time with my oldest was really understanding how to teach the activities because I didn't have um, the Simply Classical plans at the time I did it with my first daughter. And I just would go through the lesson plans. It says, you know, teach page four. I would teach page four. Then the next day I would teach page five, not going back and reviewing things, uh, reviewing information that we had already learned. So that becomes really um, important. For the first 10 weeks, they give you a lot of hands on activities. And I do suggest you do all the ones that they schedule in here. And then at the end of the 10 weeks, you get kind of, they, you are instructed to keep doing those. It just says pick whichever ones are your favorite and keep doing those. So here are some tips. So we have, um, they tell you to make word cards, you know, hat and this is pot, uh, fan and things like that. And I would definitely do this. Um, this Reading Mama actually sells like pre-printed words, but I say you kind of pick your poison. Either you write the word or you have to print them and then cut them. I think actually writing them uh, online uh, note cards is actually uh, more helpful. And there's a lot of things that you can do with them. So this is backwards for me. So I'm, I have to read this way. Uh, so some ideas that you can do with the word cards for review, you can line up five or 10 of them across the room and you would say hot and they'd run and they'd find the word that says hot and then they'd kind of run back to you with that card and you keep going until they've chosen all the words. Uh, you can also put all the cards together and you can say jump to the word hop or hop to the word hop or skip to the word skip, things like that. Um, you can write two words you can, or you can write the card twice and you can play go fish and memory. So you would write hot twice and then they try to match those words and you'd want it. If you're going to do that, you'd want to have like hat and hot. So they're deciphering that the middle letter is different. Uh, you could also a little bit more advanced would be to find the rhyming words. So hat and cat and hot and caught um, and, and things like that. Um, you can also put the word cards in hopscotch. And so the hot, you know, you play the hopscotch and it, each time you jump into one of the squares, the child would read the card. Um, you can line all the cars up literally in a line. We have tile on our floor and I put one in each square. And then we have those little scooters that you can, you know, lay your belly on or sit on and they ride over the scooter, which was actually one of our therapy activities. And you put, you roll over the card and you read it as you roll over the card. My kids really enjoy doing that. Or you can take little toy cars and you can make a track. You can kind of snake them and drive a toy car as, as the child reads the words. Then we have some other tactile ideas where you can uh, use Play-Doh and you actually would form the letters with the Play-Doh. So I would always have them make a snake. So, you know, you start with your sort of stick and uh, like a C, and then you can add it and you get a D or a B. Um, you flip it and you get a P, and then you can spell words with the little, little Play-Doh that you have made. Uh, forgot to back up. There's also these what they call the short word cards. And so you would write the word family or the, the little, fa you know, am, um, 
and and then you put you write the letters of the alphabet on a short card and you put them together and you get Pam and you get ham and things like that. Um, you can use letter tiles or beads and I've misplaced them since the last here they are. Sorry, I have six levels of supplies surrounding me right now. They were all organized, but these little letters I bought, I think on Amazon, we string them on um, just pipe cleaners and they can spell the words that they're reading. You can also do it for spelling. And then um, word ladders. And so if you want to know what a word ladder is, you literally draw a ladder and there actually wouldn't when you start there would be no words on here but you would write first cat and they would read cat and then you'd write caught and they'd read caught and then you would just keep changing one letter and then as they get more advanced you could start with cat and then say change the a to an o and then they would write c-o-t and then read that word that they just wrote i have a couple more little boards and this is just general tips for teaching phonics. You want to establish a teaching routine. I found that twice a day really worked where we always begin with review. Um, so for example, if you're, you know, if they were just doing the A sounds, you would go back through and read some of the words from those, the pages they had done previously. Then I would take about 15 minutes and use the teacher's guide. There is the first start reading teacher's guide. You really need to make sure you have that and that you're using that. Take about 15 minutes and teach from the lesson that was scheduled in your planner. And then maybe schedule about five minutes to do the writing that's scheduled in the first start reading. And then I would stop. And then after lunch, you can choose one of the multi-sensory activities that we just went through and go through what you just taught them earlier in the day. Take five minutes and play some of those games. And then once you get to book B and C, there are the supplemental readers, the um, ALS readers, Fun in the Sun and things. Uh, you might read one of those stories. You might reread one of the stories that are in the first start reading books. Um, and then maybe at bedtime as they get progress a little bit more, they can read to their dad. Uh, we, I enjoyed being able to have them do that. And then they're getting three times a day that they're really practicing their skills. So that concludes level one. We can take some questions now. Yeah, so we have a couple for level one. Um, Lindsay says, for a student with Down syndrome, phonics tends to be difficult and sight word recognition has been suggested for early literacy. For a high functioning student with Down syndrome, who I believe would be assessed for level one, would level one be best suited for this type of student? Um, I mean, yes, but Cheryl, do you want to take that one? Yes, okay. we um, we do recommend level one for students with Down syndrome. We just want to make sure that you have covered all of the information in level C prior to teaching level one. So if there's any doubt that the student um, knows the letters and the sounds that the letters represent, I would first work through level C for the very reasons you mentioned that um, phonics is um, a more difficult approach for a student with Down syndrome. However, that doesn't mean that we should do what a lot of people do, and that is teach only sight words with children with Down syndrome, because then they are largely memorizing words, and, and you rely on only memorizing words to learn to read. Obviously, that's very limiting. We have some local friends who were very frustrated with their um, their son's lack of progress with reading, and he has Down syndrome, but it was almost exclusively a sight word approach. So there's a good body of research that indicates that for children with Down syndrome, the best is to combine those two, the phonics and using a lot of sight words. It's part of the reason that we included 
those very cards that Christine showed, like the um, short word cards where we have the am, all of the families, yep. Then we have ham and we, we make words with those cards so that we're blending sight words and phonics and visual aids. So yes, one thing you might do though is plan to take two years with level one. So you teach the first week and then the next week you might reteach the first week. Teach the second week and reteach the second week. Just don't rush through it. That's that's the biggest thing that that I would say. But yes, you can definitely use level one with a child with Down syndrome. All right. Um, Jennifer asks, can you tell more specifically which letters you used on the pipe cleaners? I like how they were actually shaped like the letter instead of the beads with the letter printed on it. I bought them at Amazon. So I, <laughs> hopefully, I don't know if they're still there, but I bought them specifically for that reason exactly, that they were the shapes of the letter and you actually have to put them on correctly to be a P, especially with the P and the D and the B, they have to be put on the right way. So I, I did buy them for that specific reason. One step that I really wanted to do was spray paint them so they weren't, the, the colors kind of bother me. Uh, that there's so many colors, but they have been, they've been working. I usually just to try to have them, if they're spelling a word like make or something, I actually try to have them pick the same color so that it's not so distracting with, with all the different colors. And then Julie asked if you could put the phonics tips up again. Um, was there a particular one you wanted or all of them? While she answers that, maybe she also said any additional phonics tips for students who are nonverbal and teaching to read. They are cognitively ready, I think, and I have completed A, B, and Z, just not sure how this might play out. Well, maybe if Cheryl wants to take that and then I can put them up while she's talking because we do need to get moving on to our next level within the uh, next two or three minutes. Yes, good point. We still need to cover two and three, but it's a great question. For students with um, who are nonverbal, there's a whole body of research for nonverbal children and literacy. If you look for, I believe, the University of North Carolina, you will find a lot of help, but primarily it comes down to this. They, they can manage the input just fine. It's the output because they're not speaking, so they're not able to say am and ham so you're not sure if it's there so then you change things to show me so you could put down am and you could put down at and you could say show me am he then picks up am then you can say we're going to use an a ha huh sound which letter and maybe you put an h and a t which letter makes the ha huh sound if he knows that then um, or which letter represents, I should say. Then he picks that, and then you can say, what word do we have? Let him think about it. You could have a picture then of a ham and a hat, and you could say, point to the word that we have in front of us, and he then points to the ham. You, need, you do need to have some means of knowing whether this is sinking in or not, so you just have him show you instead of tell you but the progression is still the same. I'm sorry, my, so these, it looks like these were the tips that she had wanted to see. So you can also just take a screenshot and this is also being recorded, but it was basically establishing a routine, always beginning with some form of review, um, taking, you know, maybe about 15 minutes of instruction and then do about five minutes of writing and then stop. And then working again after lunch on some of the multi-sensory activities that you had just learned or you know, providing some kind of review and then read or reread the stories in the first start reading book or from the primary phonics readers or the um, ALS readers.